welcome to a lovely Valentine's Day themed episode of Hofstra Today. Hofstra couples go head to head to see who knows each other best. Students on campus tell us how they celebrated this romantic holiday. And we'll hear the latest from Hofstra basketball. All that and more at and around Hofstra Today. Hello again, I'm Gabe James. And I'm Amelia Sack. Welcome back, guys. I love the new intro, by the way. It's um, just so gorgeous. Gabe, how are we feeling about it being our last semester here? You know, part of me just refuses to believe that it's real. I can't believe that we're here already in our last semester of undergrad. But how are you feeling, Amelia? Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing, Gabe. I, it's really surreal. Again, I can't believe, as you just mentioned, that we're here. Um, but focusing in on today's show, we have a little bit of a Valentine's Day theme going <laughs> on. Um, I know, you know, the two of us were here last night with the cast and crew. Um, but do you have any other plans coming up? You know, I'm spending some time with my friends this weekend, but I enjoyed being my Valentine, have, having my Valentine be Hofstra today. But I could talk about love all the time. Let's get into today's stories. The Black Hispanic Alumni Association and Black History Month will be hosting the Barack Obama Presidency Hope and Change Exhibition. The program includes a private guided tour of the museum exhibition, followed by a chat hosted by the Black Hispanic Alumni Association. The event will take place February 18th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. in the David Filderman Gallery. Lunch will be provided and more information can be found on the Hofstra events calendar. On February 16th, the Hofstra Tabletop Gamers Club is hosting a board game night. This exciting event will take place in Student Center Rooms 141, 142, and 145 from 6 to 10 p.m. Students will have the opportunity to play games like Dungeons and Dragons and Cards Against Humanity. We got to speak with a few members of the club to find out more about their organization. Let's take a look. The club usually meets uh, every Thursday, uh, usually around 6 o'clock, uh, ending around like 10 o'clock p.m. And uh, we usually meet in the student center, uh, rooms around like 141, 143, 145, it depends, but it's in the same area. I joined the club because it was fun. It was something interesting to do outside of um, staying inside my, my dorm room and hanging out with friends. Uh, I was also really looking forward to do D&D in college, so that I was happy that I found this because a whole bunch of people <laughs> want to do D&D as well. Um, I usually play a game uh, called Muffin Time. There's usually about like 10 or so people. Um, I also play uh, other small games. I usually have about six. Um, I play a game called uh, O Fruckers. Uh, it's like a card game and stuff like that. And uh, I usually play a game called I'm Actually. It's like a little game show kind of thing. Mm, there's, uh, everyone has their own like session days. There was like a big meeting that like everyone who wanted D&D and wanted to be like uh, like the leader or like the DM for it um, would we had a giant meeting like, all right, who wants to join whose campaign and what, what the DMs are running and stuff like that. So some people have them on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Ours happens to be for uh, last semester and a little bit of this semester. It has, happens to be the same time as the club meeting. I play other games, uh, but mainly it is d and I mostly also play um, Cards Against Humanity, but it's kind of just between those two since d and takes a lot of time and effort to play. That just looks like so much fun. Thank you so much to the Hofstra Tabletop Gamers Club for sitting down with us and telling us a little bit more about their programs. Now make sure to swing by the club's next event tomorrow night. You won't want to miss it. With President's Day approaching, just a reminder to all students and faculty that Hofstra University will be closed and no classes will be occurring on Monday, February 20th. Additionally, there will be no classes, but the university will be open on Tuesday, February 21st. Make sure to relax and enjoy your break. Civil Rights Day is an event annually presented by the Center for Civic Engagement. It is an all-day event that will examine some major civil rights issues of today that continue to challenge activists and policymakers. The event will take place on February 22nd in various locations on campus. 
The Hofstra Community Blood Drive is on Thursday, February 23rd from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Students can schedule an appointment to donate through the New York Blood Center link on the Hofstra events calendar. Photo ID is required, so don't miss out on this opportunity to save a life. Kids Conference Services will be offering a presentation on practical functional assessment and skill-based treatment of what is known as problem behavior. Dr. Greg Hanley, PhD, will host the event and will discuss a contemporary and compassionate version of applied behavior analysis for those working with people with autism or other disabilities who engage in problem behavior. The event is open to CEUS and CPDS for teachers, social workers, and others going into the world of mental health. It will be held on February 22nd in the Mac Student Center Multipurpose Room 101. The Hofstra Cultural Center and the Department of Global Studies and Geography present Slavery by Another Name, a film screening and discussion. The presentation will take place Thursday, February 23rd from 11.20 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. The event is free and open to the public. Advanced registration on the Hofstra events calendar is required. Some good news for early risers. A team from Good Morning America is coming to Hofstra University this Tuesday, February 21st, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of Robin Roberts' life-saving bone marrow transplant. GMA and WABC are partnering with Be The Match to host a nationwide bone marrow donation drive. This event is in an effort to encourage people under the age of 40 to donate bone marrow to people in need. The televised drive will take place from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the Student Center atrium, and all Hofstra students are encouraged to register to donate. Interested students should contact Be The Match's Elizabeth Hernandez at lhernan4 at nmdp.org for more information. We hope to see you all out there. On this very special Valentine's Day episode, let's turn to Caitlin Bancroft to meet some of our campus couples. Thanks, Gabe. I suppose it's a little bit too late to ask you to be my Valentine, but there's always next year. Anyway, hello and welcome to Hofstra Today's first ever dating show segment, where we will be putting two Lawrence Herbert School couples to the test. See who knows each other better. Here's how this will work. I'll ask both couples a series of questions about their respective partners. For round one, the guys will be asked questions about their lovely ladies. After the girlies secretly write down their answers, the guys will reveal what they predicted their partner to say. If you guess correctly, your couple will get a point. If you guess incorrectly, you'll get zero points and an upset partner. Have the girls answering questions about their boys, and then we'll find out which couple knows each other the best. But first, let's meet our couples. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. So on this couch, we have Erica and Sebastian. Yep. How long have you guys been dating? Four years. Wow, what a milestone. I'm so proud of you guys. And then on this couch over here, we have Nicole and Danny. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How long have you guys been together? Seven and a half months. Seven and a half months. Well, not quite four years, but <laughs> let, you'll get there before you know it. Trust me, you don't want to rush it. Um, well, thank you guys so much for being here. Now let's go back to you, Gabe and Amelia. I can't wait to see these couples put their love to the test. But first, we'll be taking a look at some national news. Stay tuned to Hasha Today. Can I help you? I'd like one ticket to Thursday Night Live, please. Don't you mean Saturday Night Live? No, Thursday Night Live. You know, live from Studio A, it's Thursday night. I think you must be confused. It's live from New York, it's Saturday night. You're telling me you've never heard of TNL classics such as Can't Poke Me Daddy, Kitties on the Street, Robloxia, and freaking Halloweener? Robloxia? I don't know her. And that last one you said kind of sounds a little bit dirty. Are you sure you can do that on broadcast TV? Well, has Saturday Night Live ever won an Emmy? <laughs> We've won 86. So, you want tickets to Saturday Night Live or not? No, but I'll take one to Thursday Night Live. <laughs> Let's pass it over to Crystal Bermudez with today's top national news stories. Former South Carolina Governor and UN Ambassador Nikki Haley has announced her campaign for president.
Haley is the first major Republican viral to challenge former President Donald Trump for the GOP nomination. In her announcement video, she asserts that she will fight again, back against quote-unquote bullies and may be the only woman in the Republican presidential field. If she receives the nomination, she will become the first woman and the first Asian American to be nominated by the Republican Party for president. Three students were killed and five were injured at a Michigan State University shooting Monday night. The shooter, believed to be Anthony Dwayne McCray, died from a self-inflected gunshot on Tuesday, and his motive is still unclear. The victims include Alexandra Werner, an athlete, Brian Fraser, a fraternity president, and Ariel Anderson, an aspiring pediatrician. The five wounded students are in critical condition and are being treated at E.W. Sparrow Hospital. And the United States military has claimed to recover key sensors from a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that was shot down on February 4th. These sensors are assumed to be used for intelligence gathering, but the balloon has been denied by Beijing as a spy vessel. However, its presence in U.S. territory has put noticeable strain on the ties between these two parties. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has reassured the public that these objects do not present any immediate threat. In this Valentine's Day, Hofstra students had some mixed opinions on how they feel about the holiday. Let's bring it over to Sarah Ng to hear what students had planned this Valentine's Day. I'm Sarah Ng and we're here in the cafeteria to report on how Hofstra students are spending their Valentine's Day. Do you have any Valentine's Day plans this year? Well, actually, Valentine's Day is my birthday, so probably just going out to dinner with some of my friends. I'm taking my girlfriend to a very nice Italian restaurant, uh, not that far away from Hofstra, so it's going to be nice, we're going to have a good time, eat a lot of good food. Uh, my friends and I are going to do a polar plunge. I am single, so I will be just buying some roses for my friends who are also single to make them less lonely. Well, I do, actually. I'm going to watch the movie Valentine's Day with a group of friends. Very chill. Would you watch a rom-com on Valentine's Day, or would you go the completely other route and go for a horror movie? I don't like Valentine's Day, so maybe horror, but also a good rom-com is fun, you know? Any recommendations? Like When Harry Met Sally, that's a good one, classic. What kind of music would you play on Valentine's Day? What's an artist you think has like romantic music or like would capture the essence of the day? The Weeknd. The Weeknd. Yeah, I feel like The Weeknd produces some good Valentine's Day music. The artist Isabella Love Story. Love in the name. It works. She just, uh, she makes very like pop, very techno, very pumped up music. Do you prefer chocolates or candy heart? I'm not a big chocolate guy. I go candy heart. Candy heart all the way. I'd have to say chocolate hearts, you know, can't go wrong with chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate. Chocolates for sure. Definitely chocolate. But I would go candy, candy cars, yeah. Probably chocolates. Probably conversation. I'm not much of a chocolate person. Chocolate, 100%. No. I like the candy hearts with no. like the, the letters on them. No, chocolate. Like the XO. Chocolate, no, 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 no. chocolate, chocolate. For Hofstra Today, I'm Sarah Ng. Next up, we'll be bringing you some entertainment news that'll be sure to have you on the edge of your seat. Stay tuned to Hofstra Today after this short break. Hey you, yeah, you. Have you ever wanted your work to be featured on live TV? Then Director's Cut is the show for you. But Katie, how do I apply? It's easy, just follow these three simple steps. First, go to our Instagram at Director's Cut HU. And while you're there, give us a follow. Next, click the link in our bio. Finally, select the guest submission form and send us your best work. All submissions are welcome from your 27s to your senior films. This coming month, Hofstra has many exciting events all around campus. Let's take a look at your entertainment news at Hofstra. In commemoration of Black History Month, the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication will be holding a screening of the 2022 Best Documentary recipient, Summer of Soul. The film celebrates black history, culture, music, and fashion. The event will be followed by a discussion with the film's executive producer, Marie-Therese Girgis. The event will be held tonight, February 15th, for free, but advanced registration is required. 
The Barack Obama Presidency Hope and Change Exhibition focuses on topics from the Obama administration, such as 2008 and 2012 elections, health care, the Great Recession, climatic changes, and more. The exhibition will run from now until June 16th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Filderman Gallery at Hofstra University. The Drama and Dance Department are back at it again with another show that's sure to be spectacular. Introducing Wojcik, a tale of a young soldier who suffers at the hands of a corrupt system. Directed by Roasting Koppinger, this performance will be running from February 24th through March 5th. All Hofstra students and staff are invited to attend for free with no advanced registration required. Outside guests can attend with an online reservation. Love is certainly in the air at Hofstra. Let's turn to Caitlin to put some of our campus couples to the test. Thanks, Bella. It's time for our first round of the couples competition. I'm personally so excited. For this round, the men will answer questions about their girlfriends. Who's ready to rumble and bumble? You guys don't look excited. They, they're scowling at me right now. Um, so my first question, it's an easy one, don't worry. What is your significant other's favorite color? You have about 10 seconds to write it down. No pressure. Okay, Danny's done first, so I'm gonna let you go. Nicole, what is your favorite color? Light purple. Light purple. Does lavender count? I'll count it, lavender yeah, it's the counts. same. Lavender counts? Yeah, I think yes. lavender counts. So, Erica, what is your favorite color? Maroon. Maroon! Oh my god, we're off to a great start. Both couples get a point. So my next question is, who is your significant other's celebrity crush? Oh my god, I see some stalled pens. They're like, they're like um, is it because there's a lot of celebrity crushes or because there's so few? Nicole? So few for me. Am I ready? Are we ready to reveal? Yes, we are. Okay. Tom Holland. I wrote Dylan Sprouse. Oh, you were doing <laughs> so good. All right, Erica, what's your celebrity crush? Um, Jensen Ackles. Yeah, I knew this one. Yay! Amazing, Sebastian, look at you. No pressure, Danny. Um, so my last question is, what is your significant other's ideal vacation destination? I don't like how much hesitation there was. There was so much hesitation. I'm hesitating. Okay, Sebastian looks like he's done. So Erica, what is your ideal vacation destination? Um, I guess Italy, because I've been talking about that. Uh, I went I went Spain. Ah, uh, well, close, close, enough, close enough, I suppose, but no, no point for you, no, no point for you. Um, Danny, this might be your redemption. <laughs> Nicole, if you could book a ticket and go anywhere, where would you go? I would go to Greece. Australia. Oh my gosh! Well, that was kind of a disappointing round. I don't even know who's in the lead, because you guys both got that last question wrong, but I think it's Sebastian and Erica. So, um, we're going to take time to tally up the points, but back to you, Gabe and Amelia, in the studio. Stay tuned for this week's weather forecast and hear a little bit about the Crochet Club. We'll be right back after this short break. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Now it may only be February, but it's starting to feel like spring out there. Natalia, what can you tell us about this week's weather forecast? Thanks Amelia and Gabe. I'm Natalia Suaza and this is your five day weather forecast. Right now, it's a windy 56 degrees at the Herbert School. We can expect cloudy skies to continue for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 56 and a low of 38. On Thursday, we'll have cloudy skies with rain showers starting at 3 p.m. So please be careful during your commute home after class. Temperatures will reach a high of 56 and a low of 47 degrees. Now, let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. On Friday, you should keep your rain jacket close because there'll be a steady rain all morning into the mid-afternoon with temperatures reaching a high of 59 degrees and a low of 28 at night. 
Saturday, the sunshine will be back. It should be the perfect day to spend with friends outside. Temperatures will reach a high of 41 and a low of 24. On Sunday, temperatures will bring a high of 48 and a low of 31. We will have mostly cloudy skies with bursts of sunshine peeking out from the clouds during the day. Hopefully, the clouds bring a clear, beautiful sunset that will start a relaxing President's Day break. That's all for your five-day weather forecast. I'm Natalia Suaza. Now, let's see what the Crochet Club is up to on this Valentine's Day. Being crocheted hearts right now. They're not coming along too great, but we're still trying. We're trying. Yeah. It's For me, it's my first time crocheting, so it's just a learning experience today. So this is a beanie that I was trying to work on. I really like the yarn. My friend got it for me. Isn't it cute? And basically, I'm just trying to sew the top right now. Um, she's teaching me how to do it because I haven't done the slip stitch crochet sew. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. I'm just making like heart-shaped coasters. They're um, on a YouTube thing that I'm following. They're called like granny heart coasters. I think they're just supposed to be like little heart coasters and I'm gonna make like four of them and probably give them to someone. I think it'll be cute. So if you want to pick up a new hobby, I really yeah. recommend like trying out crocheting. You can come to the club, beginner or not, and we'll have fun and hang out and listen to music and make it so and de-stress and everything else that comes with crocheting. <laughs> And our time is up, but we'll be right back with your Pride Athletics update. Hey you! Yeah, you! Have you ever wanted your work to be featured on live TV? Then Director's Cut is the show for you. But Katie, how do I apply? It's easy! Just follow these three simple steps. First, go to our Instagram, at Director's Cut HU. And while you're there, give us a follow. Next, click the link in our bio. Finally, select the guest submission form and send us your best work. All submissions are welcome from your 27s to your senior films. It's almost springtime and you know what that means. Sports season is in full swing. Let's hear from Jason White with the Hofstra Sports Update. Hello sports fans, I'm Jason Wyke with your Hofstra Today Sports Update. First up, Hofstra Men's Lax, who hosted Navy on Saturday. Navy raced out to a 5-1 lead in their first quarter versus the Pride in what looked to be a routing. Early in the second, Griffin Turner scored back-to-back -back goals, followed by Rory Jones jumping into the mix to get the home side within one. Midshipman would score two unanswered at the end of the half to make it 7-4. The third quarter saw Navy expand their lead further to 9-4, yet Hofstra refused to quit as it tenaciously scored four straight, three of which came from Gerard Kane. Somehow, someway, the Pride tied things up early in the fourth. However, Navy would bounce right back with another pair of goals. After swapping goals back and forth, the Pride fell just short 13-12. to Next up is the hottest team on campus, the Hofstra Pride men's basketball team, as they continue to excite and have extended their win streak, which is now up to eight. On Monday night at the Mac Arena, the Pride faced the Dragons of Drexel in a convincing 66-52 win. Aaron Estrada, D. Stone DeBar, and Tyler Thomas all reached double digits, scoring 22, 11, and 16, respectively. The Pride also reached 20 wins for the 25th time in program history. Sitting pretty in first place, the CAA is theirs to lose. Last but certainly not least is the men's tennis team. Hofstra won the doubles point and swept all three completed singles matches in a 4-0 victory over LIU Sunday night at Sport Time in Syosset. Josh Reynolds and Matthew Garcia started off the night with a win at number two, double 6-2. Ostap Kovalenko and Bo Coltorts followed with a 6-2 win at number one to clinch the point. Garcia kept the momentum going in singles as he earned a 6-2 and 6-1 victory at number three. Followed by a 6-4 and 6-3 win from Vincent Torina at the number four flight. 
Kovalenko sealed the deal with a 7-6 and 6-4 win at the number one that ended the match. This win was Hofstra's third in a row and improves the Pride's record to 4-2 on the season. That's all the time we have for this segment of Hofstra Today Sports. I'm Jason Wyke. But coming up next, let's send it back to Caitlin one more time to see these Hofstra couples face off during one final trivia test. Thanks, Jason. We are just having too much fun over here. We're in our final round, <laughs> and the girls will answer questions about their guys. And remember, the team with the most points at the end of this round will be declared the winner and the best couple on campus. That's a, what a title. So let's, <laughs> let's begin. Um, since I did an easy question for the guys last time, I'll do an easy question for you girls this time. What is your significant other's favorite food? All right, we've got some pondering, pondering. All right, it looks like Nicole is done. So Nicole, um, I mean, well, Danny, let's start with you. What is your favorite food? Salmon. Salmon. I said seafood. Okay, so we'll I feel it, we'll like that's in the round. Yeah. So I feel like you guys get a point, ding, which ding, makes ding. it tied. So Erica, well, Sebastian, what is your favorite food? Mine is bacon. Erica, what did, what did you think his favorite food was? Ketchup. It's either ketchup or eggs. Can ketchup be considered a food? Ketchup Isn't is a ketchup burger. a condiment? I count it so, as a food with the so, mouthpiece. So that's, <laughs> the, we're, gonna, we're gonna say no to that one. All right, so now you guys are in the lead. All right, so going, speeding along, what is your significant other's zodiac sign? This is very important for the dating age nowadays. Like if you don't know your partner's zodiac sign, you guys are like, you guys are missing something. Erica is already done. So Sebastian, I don't think spelling counts. Sebastian, dare I ask, what is your zodiac sign? Mine is Aquarius. Aquarius, but spell yeah. wrong. I mean, hey, who, who needs to know how to spell these days with Grammarly? Uh, moving on, Danny, what is your zodiac sign? Today is actually my birthday, so that means I am an Aquarius. Happy birthday, Danny! Oh my god. And, and she got it right. I hope you guys have the best time on your birthdays. Thank you so much. And then the last question is, if your significant other could travel to one time period, what would it be? This is a hard one. There's so many like eras and decades that I feel like I would want to go back to just for the fashion and the food. So um, I'll be impressed. But Nicole's already done, so that's impressive. Danny, what time period would you go back to? Ancient Rome. Hey, one more point for the birthday so boy team. Um, Erica, well, Sebastian, what yes. time period would you go back to? Probably the 90s, <laughs> just to see the, the tech boom. What did you put? The question right mark. <laughs> All right, so I think that wraps it up. I think Danny and Nicole were the clear winners. Thank you guys so much. I mean, I know. It's your birthday, so this is more of a present for you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you guys for joining us. And back to you, Gabe and Amelia in the studio. Thank you all for tuning in to the first episode of Hofstra Today this spring semester. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our new TikTok at Hofstra Today for some fun video updates. Until next time, that's all at and around Hofstra Today.